so the first thing that comes to your mind when you think Michigan Railroads probably isn't a British train, right? If I said the Boyne City Railroad, you might change your mind. The Boyne City Railroad originally began as the timber hauling Boyne City Southeastern Railroad in 1893. It became the Boyne City Gaylord and Alpena Railroad in 1905, hauling passengers and timber throughout the northern portion of Michigan's Lower Peninsula. After going bankrupt in 1935, the railroad was sold for scrap, but the Boyne City Railroad soon took its place, being built on the former railroad's seven miles of roadbed. The new railroad resumed freight operations from Boyne City to Boyne Falls, connecting with the Pennsylvania Railroad. Though it would be in 1970 that the railroad would see a rather significant change. With freight traffic drying up, Hollis M. Baker, a furniture maker and model railroader with the dream of owning a real railroad, purchased the Boyne City line in cooperation with two other individuals. The Boyne City Railroad would be converted into a tourist operation. For motive power, there was the railroad's 1950 GE 44 tonner nicknamed Ladybug, and a gallery of clothes and open-air coaches were acquired. But another locomotive would be acquired from across the pond in England. The Mefford Power Station in Staffordshire operated two 060 tank engines built in 1951 by Robert Stevenson and Hawthorne. Number one and two moved coal cars throughout the complex until the early 1970s when diesel power took over. In 1970, number two, built as RCH number 7745, was acquired by the Boyne City Railroad, now being named Flying Duchess, along with three British Railways Mark I coaches. The Flying Duchess locomotive would be lettered for the Boyne City Railroad and given American knuckle couplers. The Boyne City Railroad began operations in 1971 with two trains, the English train with the Flying Duchess and the open-air car mixed freight with the 44-tonner. Trains utilized the seven-mile track between Boyne City and Boyne Falls with daily and weekend service operating during spring, summer, and fall. Each round trip took around one hour and 40 minutes. A museum, gift shop, and guided tour of the railroad shops were available as well. Passengers could sightsee on the train, and then spend some time shopping in Boyne City along Lake Charlevoix before returning to Boyne Falls or vice versa. The line saw 25,000 passengers each summer on average. Unfortunately, no amount of scenery or unique trains could save the Boyne City Railroad from the 1973 energy crisis. With gasoline rationing becoming commonplace, Americans weren't driving as much to conserve what available gas there was. Thus, the Boyne City Railroad saw fewer and fewer passenger numbers after only a couple of years of operation. The line closed in 1973, with the railroad's assets being put up for auction in spring of 1976. Local investors and rail fans led by Joseph Gearlock purchased the railroad for $140,000, including the railroad right-of-way, 44-ton diesel, three open-air passenger cars, a caboose, two depots, and a water tower. That same year, the Boyne Valley Railroad was formed and resumed passenger operations between Boyne City and Boyne Falls. Spring, summer, and fall service continued with the 44-tonner. Though, in 1978, the Federal Railroad Administration surveyed the line and deemed it unsafe for service. Official operations would conclude in 1978, but privately operated excursions continued up until the fall of 1981 with a borrowed locomotive and a variety of coaches. The Boyne Valley Railroad would be abandoned in 1982 and eventually ripped up. Remnants of the short line do live on. The Boyne City Depot and offices are a home designer and restaurant respectively. A caboose is at the Kalamazoo Model Railroad Historical Society. A snowplow is at the Mid-Continent Railway Museum in North Freedom, Wisconsin. And two of the British Railway's coaches now reside in Standish, Michigan at the former Michigan Central Depot. 44 tonner number 70 was sold to the Indiana Transportation Museum and restored as Nickel Plate Road number 91. After the museum moved sites, the unit was sent to Georgia where it's now painted blue. Boyne City Railroad 280 number 18 operates on the Arcade and Attica Railroad of New York. As for the Flying Duchess locomotive, it first went to the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum in Chattanooga in the early 1980s where it briefly operated. In 2000, it was sold off to Indiana, then to a scrapyard in Kentucky where it came close to being scrapped. Luckily, the locomotive was saved by the Ohio Valley Railroad Historical Foundation and now resides at the LaGrange Railroad Museum in LaGrange, Kentucky. It's since been repainted into a livery, somewhat inspired by its original design. It now resides with several other pieces of equipment next to CSX's LCL subdivision. Even if the Flying Duchess's days as a power plant switcher and excursion engine may be over, the equipment and memories of the Boyne City Railroad have thankfully been preserved as a reminder of a rather unique Michigan Railroad operation. 
Thank you.